Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to create a form, use all the features that are built in native to the platform on Squarespace, and I'm gonna show you a few tricks that I use to make the form as easy as possible to be filled out and to make sure you're getting full responses. All right, so here I am on my demo website. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the contact page and I'm gonna build a form from scratch. So in this process, you'll see here, we already have this form kind of set up and it's cool, but I do wanna build it out a little bit more advanced. So the first thing I'm gonna do is double click into the editor or click edit and get into the editor. Then I'm on this form block. If you don't have a form block, you just find the add block and then find form. Once you add that in, you'll be good to start. I'm gonna throw this over to the side and we're gonna work with this one as our main one. A few things to note, the little asterisk means that it is required. The user cannot fill out the form, cannot hit send or submit without filling out this button, uh, without filling out this field. And it looks like all of these are required. So in this case, we'll walk through what that looks like and what I recommend there. Now, when I get started, the first thing you're going to want to do is give it a name. So if it's your contact form, if it's book a consultation, whatever that is, give it a name so it's not titled new form. Also, what's useful is you, if you have 10 forms on your website, you can actually say this is like contact form and the one on your homepage is homepage form, home contact form, something like that. So when you get responses, you'll see where these forms are actually coming from. That could be really useful to you as well over time. You'll see, hey, everyone's filling out the form on the service page versus the home page versus the contact page. So number one, we fill out the form name. Number two, you could adjust the button. So it says send or submit or uh, send in your question, whatever it is, you could change that here. I'll just type in send for the sake of, and then all the magic happens in this edit form fields. We will come back to post submit because that's actually really important, but we're gonna go to edit form fields now and get into it. Now this is where all the magic happens. So the first thing I'm gonna wanna do is add in everything I want and then start to customize it. So in this case, I'm gonna do this like I'm booking a phone consultation and adjust everything to be exactly as I want it. I'm gonna need name, email, phone number. I'm gonna need a drop down for price ranges. And uh, let's see, maybe one or two other things as well. So let's get into it. So there's a few things here already. I'm not gonna have subject. I think subject is kind of not, it's not necessary, it kind of just clutters the form, but I could use that text box for something else that I'll show you in a moment. So first thing I'm gonna do is hit add field. And I wanna add a drop down. So I'm gonna hit select uh, and this little drop down here. What you can do here is you can go in here and basically uh, adjust it as you like. So here I'm gonna say budget and then I will say this is required. And what is this? A little description, I don't need the description. Options. This is cool, they made it pretty simple. You could just come in here and add your options as you go. I'm just gonna add in five and I'm gonna put zero to 5K. I'm gonna start out high, <laughs> 5K to 8K. Boom, okay, so I have all these options here. Just wrote them out as I went and I'm good to go. If you need to reorganize it, you just hit edit and then you could come in here and, oh, it actually is not letting you reorganize it. Hit done. Oh, so these have to be in order. Okay, so that's that. I'll go back and we'll be good to go. We have all those options there. It's required, we're good to go. So I'll go back, boom. When I wanna reorganize these, I'll hit edit at the top and you'll see these three little lines show up, which means you can grab it and reorganize it as you like. So a few things to keep in mind with this. Um, let's now do a phone number. So for a phone number, you can do, let me see, where is this? Um, it's right there. You could do a phone like this. So it shows up with these three separate boxes. Unless you need that, do it. But my recommendation is actually just to do a, uh, a number field and make it a phone number. So then I would do this phone number, make it required, and then let them fill it out. This looks a little funny with the font, but so I'll just do that. Perfect. And then in here, you can do like a, a phone number placeholder. If you want, you could totally do something like this, but you don't have to. Uh, and you could do 
include area code, but people get this already. So it's truly not necessary. So that's all there. Cool. Phone number. Again, I use the actual like number field, not the phone number field, because this one just gets a little bit tricky. And yeah, if you need a country code, that just complicates the form for people and makes it a lot harder because it's four boxes they're filling out versus just uh, one. So I'm going to delete this one because I don't need that. Um, the subject, this is where I can do, I can keep email as email, which is ideal because it keep it as the at sign. Um, but let's say I need to ha like set a time for the appointment um, or something like that. What I could do is I could go to add field and I could come in here and where is it? There's like this date. You could do a date, but the month, the day, the year could be a lot. There's no time included. So I could do something like this best time to contact you. And then I add a description, time and date. And then boom, they could come in here and write that in as they like. So that's clear. All of that's clear. Now I want to add in a website. So I come in here and I would add website, which makes sure they add in a URL. The one thing I'd say in this case is like if I was doing this for a website design project, they might not actually have a website up yet. They might not have defined their URL. So I actually wouldn't make that one required. I would leave it like just set as is. So that way the, the user in this case, if they don't have it, they don't get stuck, like unable to fill out the form. You want to make sure that nothing stops them if they are the right fit to fill out the form, but they might have a few things they're working on in the process. So basically there we have a lot of, of options. And now let me just go through these. So you get a sense of them name, text uh, name is going to give you the two separate boxes. Text is just going to give you one. In some cases that might be better for name. Maybe you want to make it less complicated. Maybe you don't need their last name. So maybe a text box for name can work just fine. Email again, simple, clear. That's great. Phone number, three boxes. Text area is like this message area right here, which is cool. It just gives more space for them to write into. Select, we already built that. A checkbox is nice. So let me click into this one so we can kind of see the options here. So here it can be, uh, what service do you need? And then down here, it could say options. It could be like design, strategy, branding, website build, etc. So this could all give you options and they could select a few. And so that could be required. They could select a few easy to work with. Great. Let's go to add field. This is becoming a long form. Uh, now let's go to radio. Radio is interesting. Same thing. But this one is just going to be one. A checkbox is going to give you multiple radio is you choose one or the other. It's kind of like a yes or no or like it has to be one of those options. So you could use that next up after radio is survey. If you're doing a survey, you can use this address. I'll talk a little bit about address. Address again is a little bit complicated. It's a full on thing. So it gives you the whole like address field. What is nice about these form fields is that they are tagged properly. And as you know, with any form that you use on like Google uh, on Safari or Google Chrome or Firefox, they auto fill out based on past things you filled out before. Or if you have like a, a one last pass or one password, they can fill out these form boxes for you, which is really nice. You just want to double check at the end of this, especially if it's a long form that it gives the person easy access to fill it out, especially if they're in different countries or there's different situations like the phone number thing that could get complicated. If you have clients from all around the world, the address thing gets complicated if you have people from all around the world. So it, there might be other ways you want to set these things up. So an address could be really good with let's go to a text area. Uh, and a phone could go really good with a number, things like that. So it's just important to keep in mind the way you test it is just once you finish the form, go through the process, fill it out a few times, a few different ways, see if any errors come up and adjust accordingly. All right, next up, we have the survey. Let's just take a look at that. This is pretty cool. If you really want to do a survey, you have a lot of options here. Wonderful. Uh, survey, we talked about address a line, a line is nice. If you need sections, again, you don't probably want your form to be too long, but this gives you a nice way to break up sections. And you could also just like not have a title. It could just be a line break, or it could have a title and say like personal information, and then you could 
talk to it here. What's cool about this, I believe, is if you know a little bit of code, um, uh, this is like very basic HTML. So as you can see here, it just made that bold. Uh, if you want to make a link here, you could do that with like the A and do this and set up a link. So let me change that. So this could be a link to the homepage. So this would end up being a link here, which is cool. So there are options here to make a few like small adjustments to it. Um, and then the underline really carries that information for you. So if you need a line break, great. Cool, date, we, did we talk about date? We might've talked about date. I think we talked about date. We did not talk about time. Uh, time, again, this is like, it's just a lot. If you're saying, hey, what's the best time for a meeting? Like hour, minute, second, this is like kind of crazy. Um, and there's no option to like remove some of these. So I just don't know when you'd ever use that really, unless you specifically need that. Currency is interesting if you need like a dollar amount. Again, a drop down might be better or a text box might be better because somebody puts 20K, 20K won't work in currency. They'll literally have to write 20000, which isn't a lot, but it's a different process. So that's worth keeping in mind. Uh, Twitter handle, cool, interesting, and then hidden is if you need it. So for the most part, that is all good. Then we're gonna come in here. I'm gonna quickly delete some of these and come right back. Okay, perfect. I think I have everything I need. The last thing I wanna do is this text box in the middle here for message. I wanna ch change that to comments. If you have any other questions, you could drop them here below. I'm gonna not make that required and set that up properly. And now I'm gonna organize it. So as any form is, usually name, email, and phone are the top options. And then you go into other details here. So I would probably talk about maybe the URL as well. What service do you need? I'd probably drop that here. Then I talk about budget. Yep, best time to contact you. Comments would be at the bottom. This can be like a, a line break at the top. So it's like personal info first, and then you could have another line break, but that would be a lot for this form. So I'm actually just gonna delete that just like that. Perfect, done and we're good to go. Now we just developed this beautiful form. Like it has everything we need. We'll do a test on it. There's one more thing we've got to do before we do the test, but we're good to go. So that was step three of the process. Step four is post submit. I highly recommend sending people, redirecting them to a thank you page. So you want to create a thank you page. I have another video on that on YouTube somewhere. So you could create a thank you page for them. Really simple and easy. So that once they fill out the form, it takes them to a thank you page, it says, hey, in the next 24 to 48 hours, we'll get back to you, business hours, we'll get back to you, whatever that might be, you're good to go. Um, so that's four. Step five, you could do design as well, but I'm gonna just like kind of sweep over that. Number five is storage. Now this is really cool. There's a lot of options you have for storage. I'm gonna highlight two things that I really recommend for anyone so this works the best. Number one, you wanna send it to an email. You can only send it to one email. From that email, you could disperse it to others, but you could only send it to one email through this tool. So you wanna set it up with an email, a hello, a support, uh, info, any of that, or your email directly. From there, what I also recommend is connect Google Drive. The reason you wanna do this is you could have all this info also go into a Google Sheet. And you could do both of these simultaneously. So it can go to an email and it can go to Google Drive you just set up a Google Sheet. It's literally completely free. And if there's ever ever an error where you're not getting an email, you have a backup. Now that should never happen, but if it ever did, you have a backup for it. So you hit connect to Google Drive. It'll open up your email accounts. So you'll choose an email account. It'll say, are you sure it'll create? You say, yes, that's fine. Just like that, you just create a spreadsheet. If you have one already, you just put the name in there. But here I'm gonna say um, anchor, pro contact form. And so if you're gonna use this across your site, you're gonna to wanna to remember that. But in this case, I'll just drop that. And so anytime someone fills this form out, it'll go to my email and it'll go to Google Drive, that's great. Cool, and that's it. Those are the five steps. You could look at design. These are like two simple things you could do. You could basically just move the button um, accordingly. So you could do that. And then there's a the light box feature. Now, this is a little bit extra. I'm just gonna to touch this slightly. If you don't need this, you could skip ahead. But the light box basically puts the form into a button. I recommend this if you have like a long home page and you wanna have people fill out the form without like having forms all over the page. But I do not recommend this um, on a contact page like this. Uh, so two things to keep in mind here. The button will say like book a 
consultation, for example, if this was on your homepage. And then the one thing to keep in mind is whatever you name the form will show up for the user. So it'll say contact form at the top. So if you put contact form 723, like whatever, they're going to see that it just ends up showing up. So let me save this so I can show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to put contact form one, two, contact one, two, three, four. Cool. So let me hit save. And then we're going to take a look at this. This is like not designed out yet. It's not finalized. But if I click on this, you'll see now it shows up at the top. So that is there. Now, let me go back and I'm just going to set this as a regular form again. So we can use it the way we like. Get rid of this one, two, three and get rid of the light box. Leave the button over to the left. All right. Perfect. Hit save. And now we're going to fill out this form. So the form is here. We're going to fill it out. Like I said earlier, if people's info is already in here, it's easy. It's really easy for them to just get that info in. Um, let's do this. Perfect. Cool website. Remember, this is not mandatory. So I'm just going to skip it. Design strategy. Again, you could check off a few like or what services do you need budget? You have you select one of them. Great. Best time to contact you. Uh, time and date after 2 p.m. on Friday. Cool. Can't wait to get started. Perfect. And I honestly think this form should go through automatically. There should be nothing that gets in the way of it. But this is why we test it. So I hit send. Let's go It encountered some problems. So it does not like the phone number because it's only supposed to be numbers. So I got to get rid of these dashes. So that's a little bit of a bummer. Um, and that's about it. Boom. Thank you sent took him to the thank you page. Perfect. Literally just worked great. So that is the way you create the form. You get it set up right. You make sure all of it's done properly and all of that. I'm going to get rid of this form because I don't need it. And then I'm just going to drag this over and get this center. Put that there and then line this up here. Boom, we got it good to go. And just like that, you create a beautiful form. So there's a full guide from beginning to end on how to get a form set up. So you have a beautiful website. And when people fill out the form, just make sure you test this. So it's the easiest process possible uh, in the user experience. Friends, if you got value from today's video, hit that like button. When you hit the like button, it tells me that you got value from today's content. It tells the YouTube algorithm some fancy, important, critical information, but it tells me you got value from today's content. Next, if you want more resources for your site on Squarespace, anything from SEO to blogging, check out the links below. We have so many resources on our website and we're publishing new resources each and every month. So we have plugins, we have downloadables, we have free downloadables, we have blog posts, we have a ton of content, we have a ton of services, a ton of great things for you. Finally, if you want more content just like this, consider subscribing. We publish three new videos a week. My mind is blown that we're publishing three videos a week. It is a lot of content, but we're doing it for you. So three videos a week. If you want more, consider subscribing and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.